I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. Amen. Amen. My God in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midnight. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 may uh, at your right hand, but it will not come near you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I don't know about you you all. You may have been driving on the road and you've been seeing the rain, but I got a reason to praise God even in the midst of the rain. Even in the midst of the rain. Without rain, there's no flowers. Without rain, there's no growth. So many times you may find yourself coming into this place in the midst of a storm, but God has you right where you're needed to be in the middle of the rain because you are a seed. You are a seed and God wants you to grow. It's good to see everybody here that's in person, uh, in the in-person sanctuary, and we know that there are those that are tuning in um, to the cyber sanctuary. We're thankful to be in this digital age that we're in, to be able to tap in, even for those that may be at home and the sick and shut in. We definitely want to express our gratitude for your presence uh, this morning. Um, we want to extend our prayers for those that are traveling right now. We know the angel of this house, Brother Atwater Sr., is at West Suburban, um, a minister in a gospel meeting. Um, I'll have the privilege to join him on Wednesday as well um, to, to speak at the gospel meeting and um, just to be able to uh, connect with a lot of congregations in the Illinois region. Um, you know, I feel like I got Milwaukee down, Pat Brentwood, Central, you know. We got our, our bond, but I'm definitely looking forward to continuing to build relationships, uh, really for the Midwest. Uh, I'm not sure if y'all looked around, but there's a lot of young ministers in the pool up here right now. Um, you know, I'm not sure if you all are on TikTok, but, you know, they say, don't let them say that young people are serving God. Here we are. Here we are. So uh, we definitely are demystifying that young people aren't in the church. Um, we see young brothers like this. It's good to have backup in the church. I'm seeing Raymond. I'm like, man, come over here to North Shore, man. Come, come, come lift us up and to be able to be willing. Um, having a willing spirit is so needed. Um, but looking around, I see young people in the crowd. I see young people in the crowd. Let's give them a round of applause. Look, you believe me, I know you could have been anywhere Sunday morning. Could have been anywhere. You could have been in bed, depending on how late your Saturday night was. But we're happy that we're here, and um, here at North Shore, we just want to love on you. We want to love on you. Um, we had a great time yesterday. Uh, we had a men's meeting. Uh, we were supposed to go down to uh, a West Suburban for a men's workshop, and um, it got canceled due to um, some family emergencies that happened in the congregation there. Um, but look, you got some good brothers here. They're like, you know what? We ain't going to lose this opportunity. Let's meet at the church, and let's get to work. Um, and we had a three-hour meeting. Yeah, somebody said, next time you get us brothers in here, we need some chicken or something. Okay? <laughs> we had donuts and milk, but it was a great opportunity. Uh, and we had the opportunity with our ministerial team to really lead a, um, not even, I wouldn't even call it a meeting. I, I really look at it as a strategic brainstorming session that we had uh, to really see how we can enhance our efforts to evangelize to specifically to millennials in this digital age. In this digital age, we understand that the world isn't what it is before COVID. So we learn to blame COVID. <laughs> so if you're mad at any of us as leaders, look, we're going to blame it on COVID as well. And we're going to move forward together. But we got a great opportunity to grow. We got a great opportunity to invite. We got a great opportunity to do a little bit of adjusting, do some little TLC, um, so that we can be able to, to invite others to the gospel. Um, and what other congregation to do it other than North Shore, North Shore, um, you know, and um, I'm just encouraged. I don't know about you to be able just to see uh, brothers come together. You know, there's churches in, in the state, two brothers leading the whole service. But you have, an, you have an individuals here that can not only lead the service, but then also to care for the congregation and to support the uh, congregation and to pray for the congregation. So we're in good hands, y'all. 
we're in good hands, and I believe that it's definitely all because of God. So I'm encouraged. Uh, you know, if y'all, if y'all been following on Facebook as well, you're seeing new things popping up on social media. Um, I, I definitely want to give a round of applause to Brother Zach as well as leading our media ministry. Look, we're in the digital age, y'all, so you don't need a Facebook to be a part of North Shore, amen, but uh, we definitely love to connect even on social media as well, too, um, to hear the great things that are going on at North Shore. Uh, we're all about community, amen? Amen, and we're in June, and June, um, historically, it's Men's Month, you know, Men's Health Month, you know, fellas, it's all right to get a checkup from the doctor. It's all right, y'all. It's all right to go to therapy. It's all right, y'all. It's okay. It's okay. Right. Um, but today, um, you know, I had, a, I had a title. I had a sermon all set up for men's month. Um, but we had a three-hour meeting with the brothers yesterday. <laughs> right. Um, but I'm so encouraged. I definitely uh, went back to the scriptures um, and had to do some studying uh, with our conversations. We also, also asked a lot of questions as well. Uh, like, what can we do? Uh, where's the gap? Uh, what can we tap in right away so that we can see it? And um, I got to work. I got to work, and um, God definitely um, opened my heart, but o- most importantly, opened up the Word to see what we can have for this morning. So I don't plan on being that long um, today. Also, before I dive in, um, Midwest Youth Conference is coming up. I'm, I'm excited. I remember going to the youth conference as a kid. Um, not only having relationships with your congregation, but to be able to meet other young people from different churches. Um, back in the day, it used to be like a thousand young people there. I ain't never seen a thousand people before in youth. Like, and y'all all wearing ties? Like, why they do this? <laughs> right, but this year it's going to be on a college campus, um, which is super exciting because we get to expose young people to a college. Get them in a dorm room. Show them how small the beds are, <laughs> right? Amen, amen. But then just the resources that how that allow us to have a good time. Basketball gym, you got the dining hall now. We don't have to. It's great. I'm excited. So there will be a meeting today uh, for those that are signed up for the youth conference after Sunday school. So can't leave. You gotta gotta go to Sunday school to come to the meeting. But we're super excited um, about the youth conference. So let's dive into the word. I'm super excited today. Um, really looking at a community. Right. When I think about North Shore, when I think about the Church of Christ, um, I think about community. I think about community. And uh, there's 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 a lot of ways that we can really look at what community means. Um, If you can look at the Hebrew word of community, uh, it's Kihila. Everybody say Kihila. Kihila. It is the Jewish community of a city organized that for the administration of charities and command work. Even in the Old Testament, that Kahila was there. And the Kahila had a purpose of being able to do the work of God, but also for the community as well. Um, I really see a lot of us as being the Kahila in today's time where not only can you come here to North Shore to be able to get a word, not only can you come here to get connected, not only can you get here uh, to be able to serve, but you also can be able to be here uh, to find your purpose and how your purpose can be connected to the community. Uh, there's many lessons that you can learn in church that can come over to the professional life. Be on time. <laughs> Give it your all. It's not about who's around you, but it's about you and how we can take that into the world. Everybody say Kihila. Even in the Greek, there's called, not, not, look, we growing together, y'all ready? Koinia. Everybody say Koinia. This means fellowship or communion or a joint partnership. Um, And I look around and I see that evident here, uh, not only in North Shore, but I see it in the Church of Christ as well, too. Uh, It's a fellowship. It's a body of believers. It's an intimate spiritual communion that we have with each other. Um, It's participating and sharing uh, a commitment that we're here together. We're not just coming here on Sundays. Uh, just so we can show that we're making perfect attendance. Nobody's going to give you a gold star this Sunday. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. But we're committed to God. We're committed to being here. We understand that even though we got to wipe the, sweep, uh, the sleep out of our eyes, that we're giving our all to God. And even if we can sacrifice two or three hours on a Sunday, that's a little bit of what we can give 
to God. And we all should have that same commitment. We should also all have that same joy as we build this community. And as we sat yesterday in the meeting and, and we understood, especially as brothers and as leaders of this church, is that we got to build the foundation of the community. We got to build the house attractive enough where people want to move in. Right? And But there's it's not even an elephant in the room. There's a gap. There's a gap. And we see that the gap is a generational gap. We know right now in a targeted group, we need to target young people. We need to reach young people, right? It's not that young people don't want to serve God. It's not that young people don't love God. They just don't have access to a place where they can see God. And we can allow God, we can allow others to see God through us, right? And in order to be the community, in order to be the hands of God, in order to be the feet of God, in order to be the body of Christ, I believe that we need to fill that gap. And we need to do it yesterday. We need to do it yesterday. It's a, a, a type of um, urgency that um, not only North Shore, again, I believe that the whole body uh, should be able to embrace right now. And it's, in a, health, it's a healthy urgency because God has us right where we need it to be able to do his work. And uh, today I want to use as a perspective as we look at the community uh, what keeps a community together is the glue. And you may ask, what's the glue? What's the glue? And today we're going to talk about the glue to community. What is the glue for us to build and bridge this gap that we have? We got the older generation ain't talking to the younger generation. We got the younger generation ain't respecting the older generation. But because of that gap, there's a lack of shared stories. There's a lack of understanding like, oh, that's why you go to church. Oh, oh that's why you stayed out the club. Oh, oh, that's why you changed your speech. But without the bridge there, we can miss the opportunity for us to meet our shared destination. If we're all going to heaven together, let me hop on your GPS. <laughs> I saved my battery. But if we got a church van, let's all get on together. And I'm super excited about uh, this, this, this sermon this morning. Uh, uh, the glue. The glue to community. What's the glue? You may ask yourself, what's the glue? What, what's the solution? The solution is encouragement. In order to keep a community together, in order to build the gap between older and young, in order to keep this moving forward, we need to encourage each other. We need to have a heart of encouragement, but not just saying, oh, I can encourage, but an intentional encouragement. Because when encouragement comes together, you're able to keep the glue. You're able to keep the community strong, especially our church. Let's look at the Greek word, parakaleo. Everybody say parakaleo. Parakaleo means community or, or encouragement uh, in Greek. And there's so many implementations, and even when I started to study this, you would think of encouragement having one definition. When you hear encouragement, what do you think of? You may be sending a card. It may be a phone call. You may be even spending the scripture to somebody. But when you look at encouragement, there's so many different implications on what this really means. First one, to call one side. You ever been called? Like, you ever got a phone call? I'm like, all right, come on. I know we're in the digital age. I know we text a lot. You ever got a phone call? It feels good to get called. Depends on who's calling now. The bill collector's calling. Right? But when you call... You remember when God called you? It felt good. It felt good. But it also encouraged you because you found your purpose. You found worth. You found value that somebody took it out of their time to deem that it was necessary just to call you. You see why it's good just to call? We got church directory just to pick up a phone and just, hey, I didn't want nothing. I didn't want to get in your business. 
I just wanted to call you. You know who's really good at that? Brother Atwater. Hey, son. I just wanted to hear your voice. That's it? Yeah, that's it. That's it. And it makes you walk away after that conversation like, man, I'm supported. Man, somebody loves me. Man, somebody thought of me. And if I didn't get this call in the moment that I was right now, and it can just change your day. That's one definition that Pericleo gives of encouragement. But then also there's another definition that it says to address or speak to. Now, it's a difference from getting a call because you got to answer. <laughs> but when you get an opportunity to address or to speak to someone, it also gives you another opportunity to encourage. And there's so many ways and so many things that we can speak to. <laughs> you can, look, they say death and life is in the power of what? But look at these ways. Look, look on your screens. Look at the ways that, many different ways that you can speak to, to admonish or to exhort, to beg or to retreat. Come to church, please. I promise you, just, just, just step in. It'll be, just, just, as long as you get there, God will do the rest. To console, to encourage, to strengthen and comfort. We're going to have a funeral here on Thursday. We're going to need to tap into this addressing. To be able to console, to encourage, to be able to strengthen. Look at number five. To instruct and teach. Now this is what the church of Christ is good at. You want me to encourage you? Let me tell you what the Bible say. This is what you need to be encouraged. Why are you sad anyway? God didn't give you that. And if we could be honest, instruction and teaching is needed sometimes. Right? But throughout it all, there are so many different ways that you can encourage. That's why we read the devotional on Romans 12. If you can teach, teach. If you can encourage, encourage. But I believe we all have a piece of in this pie to be able to keep our community together, to be able to bridge the gap that we have so that we can spread the gospel not only to Waukegan but to the world. There's many ty different types of glue. You got Elmer's glue. You got epoxies. You got super glue. We got Gorilla Glue. Anybody seen when the girl put the Gorilla Glue on her hair? I don't know if you're supposed to use it like that, but there's many different types of glue, but it has the same purpose. It's to what? Keep things together. If we're feeling like we're breaking apart, what do we need? Encouragement. Encouragement. There's different ways to encourage me, but uh, 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 glue does so many different things to those that are struggling. And uh, like I said, I, I was encouraged yesterday to sit into the meeting and hearing the conversation. It wasn't me preaching, y'all, and, and brothers realized that I love preaching, but I love brainstorming and working together as a team to get others buy in, to see where we're at. And I'm just sitting there and be like, man, we just need encouragement. Not the ones that were there. We good. But we need to be the ones that are encouraging. Right? Yeah, think about the, current, the world that we're in right now. Young people and just people in general, we're living in a digital overload. You wake up. What's the first thing you do when you wake up? Scroll. Y'all don't even pray no more when y'all wake up. Y'all scroll. Me too. Me too. Right? But encouragement helps us to defeat these negative lies that social media gives us, that digital gives us, and it uplifts people and it reminds them of their God-given worth, their God-given value. Even right now in today's time, uh, connections are hard to build. It's hard to build authentic relationships, but encouragement helps you to build this sense of community. It's the reason why I love coming to North Shore. While I'm driving on the road, like, I can't wait to get there. It's because I know someone's going to encourage me today. I'm guaranteed of it every Sunday that I can count on one of you all to encourage me. It's what keeps me going. So I can only imagine someone that doesn't have hope. Someone that is dealing with family problems. Somebody that is having a rough background. They come to North Shore and they get loved on. They're going to be like, what y'all doing on Wednesday? 
What y'all eating at the church? <laughs> Connections start to build. See, uh, right now, faith uh, is tough to have as young people. We're living in a world with doubt and skepticism. We talked about it yesterday. But faith and encouragement helps you to build trust in God. If you can encourage me showing that why you trust in God, then it gives me a reason to trust in God even more. Encouragement is needed, y'all. But more importantly, it's needed to engage in evangelism. If we're not looping encouragement in, uh, into our invitation, if we're not looping encouragement into our persuasion, and we're like, oh, yep, it says teach, I'm supposed to teach, rather than putting the lens of encouragement on top of it, then the effectiveness of North Shore is diminished. And we're here to be fully effective. We're here to give God our all and want to give and know what our all is. But it takes for all of us to be on the same page. And I invite us over to Romans 15. Romans chapter 15, and uh, we'll, we'll start at verse 1 for our text. And thank you for the brothers who have uh, led us in worship so, service so far. I think that's one of my favorite parts, too, when the brothers get together and we plan out who's going to be. Like, I'm just like, we in good hands. We in good hands, right? And uh, Romans chapter 15, verses 1, uh, it says, We who are strong ought to bear with the failings of the weak and not to please ourselves. What? You, you're telling me I'm not supposed to join the homeless ministry and go out into the streets and give and then take a selfie? Put it on Facebook. Look what, look what I'm doing. You, you, you telling me that I, I, I'm not supposed to look for my public acknowledgement for me sending cards and meals? You, you, you telling me that it's not about me? I thought God was for me. We <laughs> who are strong ought to bear with the failings of the who? The weak. We here today because we are strong. Brooks, you don't know what I had this week. I'm barely here. I'm only here because I got this. I got to come because if I ain't come, this this third Sunday, I turn my back. <laughs> but you are strong because you have God on your side. And that's one thing that we got to remember. I understand it gets tough. I understand the devil is busy. But you have God on your side. And if you're feeling like you're weak, then tap into God. But there are individuals out here that don't know our God. They think of our God and they see punishment. They think of our God and they see negative. They think of their God, our God and they see restriction. They don't see freedom. They don't see love. They don't see hope. They don't see transformation. That's why you're needed. That's why God has tapped your shoulder and said, hey, you remember what I brought you through? It's time for you to get off the pew now and be able to be put to work. But it's not for ourselves. <laughs> you know, data shows, science shows that when you serve others, the benefits actually benefit you more. Right? But that's just science. <laughs> God says, when you serve others, it's pleasing unto me. Verse 2, it says, each of us will please our neighbors for their good to build them up. Not for your gold star, but to build them up. That's why I have a special affinity for young boys, especially young boys of color. Because I know this that. I understand the pressures of them to be able to provide. How, how can you be expected to provide with nothing? How can you expect it to be able to problem solve when you feel like you're the problem? But I feel them. So then, because I have an infinity for them, my focus when I see a young boy is to build them up. Because that's what encouragement can do. For verse 3, watch this, for even Christ 
did not please himself. But as it is written, the insults of those who insult you have fallen on me. Don't even worry about who's talking about you. Like I said before, if somebody ain't talking about you, that means you ain't doing nothing. If you ain't in somebody's mouth, then that means you need to do a little bit more to be spoken of. But even if you were insulted, it's going to fall on Jesus. He'll take it from you. He'll get away. We we ain't got to worry about the haters. But what's still needed is what? Encouragement. Watch this, verse 4. For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us a form of what? Encouragement. So that through the endurance taught in the scriptures and the, what? Ooh, another word. Encouragement. They provide what? We might have hope. If we understand that this world is a hopeless world, what does they need? Encouragement. Because through encouragement, through the scriptures, we, we can read the Bible and we can see everybody needed encouragement. Because the journey gets tough. It gets tough. Verse 5, may the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you the same attitude of mind toward each other that Christ Jesus had. Whoa! You telling me I can't look at somebody based off their past? You, you telling me I can't look at somebody or engage with somebody based off my feelings? Based off my current emotions? Mm-mm. Mm -mm. God says that we should give encouragement, we should give hope the same way that I look at you. (laughs) I'm so happy God encourages me. (laughs) Because I know I need it. But because how close God stays with me on a day-to-day basis, because how close God stays with my family on a day-to-day basis, it takes nothing from me to encourage someone else. It actually gets fun to encourage You actually wake up one day, who can I bless today? And for the young folk, you you ain't got to worry about seeing. You can bless somebody off Facebook. When I learned just to put something positive on Facebook, even a scripture, you're breaking the devil's schemes. Because that's his play field to put none but negative. You see what's going on right here, but you can be the change. You can be the difference that puts in encouragement. But with the same mind, the same attitude towards each other that Christ Jesus had. Aren't you glad that God didn't give up on you? Aren't you glad that God didn't say, "Mm mm-mm, he's difficult. That he sent his only son to die for us because what we couldn't do on our own. That's love right there, y'all. Verse 6, so that with one mind and one voice you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. We shouldn't all have different messages coming out of North Shore. We should be having the same message with the same voice. When you hear Slay, you hear Brooks. When you hear Isom, you hear Brooks. When you hear Atwater, you hear Slay. It's, we're in the same. And that's the beauty of unity. It's the beauty of unity. We can all be different, but we can be on the same page. Well, how do we do that? Verse 7, accept one another. (laughs) Then just as Christ accepted you, when you felt you were unacceptable, it gives us an opportunity to accept others. And we know right now the world is in need of acceptance. Now, we got an opportunity to also encourage and to teach. And to lay the word of God and show what God's standards are. But we still have the opportunity to accept everyone. Because Christ accepted you. And that that humble spirit should give you an encouragement to find someone, even if that person is not in your generation. We're talking about building, bridging the gap. But we see how glue works. 
that it connects with someone with a purpose. The reason why you're able to sleep good at night is because the glue is working extra time on your bed. You're not thinking about the glue in your bed. But that glue is standing there, firm, so that you can have a good night's sleep. The church is moving forward and being able to connect with young people. But we're needing you to be able to stand in the gap. Because once we find a young person got the same testimony as you, <laughs> and we're like, hey, this, I feel like this is you. Y'all need some coffee. Will you be ready? With an encouraging spirit. Let me keep moving on. We, we talked about how glue, how glue works, but I also want to look at when glue breaks. I want to look at when glue breaks. And there's one main thing, especially that I've seen just through my short experience working and ministering here, and not even here at North Shore, just across Kansas City, Texas, Southwestern, things of that nature. There's one barrier to encouragement. Selfishness and competition. Selfishness and competition. And selfishness and competition hinders Encouragement. We are all on the same team with the same goal. Now, I've been trying to persuade y'all to become Milwaukee Bucks fans for the longest, so I'm going to keep on using my Bucks illustrations. If Drew Holiday decided to shoot the ball for the other team, while we had the ball, the championship would be impossible to reach. If the coach decided to give his playbook <laughs> to the other coach, hey man, this is what we're going to do right here. The championship will be unattainable. And that's just when the lights are on. In practice, we saw the Warriors, right? Can we, let's, let's get off the books. We saw the Warriors. We saw the punch to Draymond with Jordan Poole and how that rocked the culture behind the scenes. It affected how the outcome will be when the lights were on. It's hard to play church on Sunday when you got beef Monday through Friday, y'all. It's hard to say we're a loving church when you're not loving each other during the week. That's why everybody zoom out. But if we are going to be a church committed on encouragement, understanding that the glue of the community keeps us together, then we don't need to be in competition with each other. See, what I love about the church is that there's always work to do. I'm pretty sure if you're thinking about something, ain't nobody doing it, that means you need to do it. But throughout it all, even the person that's taking that risk on faith on doing something that wasn't done, they're still going to need encouragement because it's scary. Even the person that's holding something that they've been passed on to and they just try to make sure that it doesn't break. You know what they need? Encouragement. We all are needing our need of encouragement. And if I can look to the right, if I can look to the right and say, who am I going, what ministry am I going to encourage today? Let me slide $50 to the fellowship committee. I know they're going to need it. Let, let me get up here on a Saturday and let me help cut the grass. I know he's going to need, let, let me go clean some toilets. Because when you're in an encouraging mindset, you're able to do what God has called you to do. It helps you to celebrate others. Let's turn to Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if you're feeling good because you know the benefits of being in God, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being what? Like-minded. 
having the same love, being what? One in spirit and of one mind. Verse 3, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. It ain't about you. I know that's a hard pill to swallow because in the world, everything's about us. The next title, the next accomplishment, the next paycheck, the next, it's all about us. But when you come into this where we're all a part of one, you lose I and you put in we. Rather in humility, value others above yourself. Value others above yourself. Not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the others. See, I'm a transparent person. I ain't going to lie. The first time I came down here, I'm like, man, this is an hour drive. <laughs> then I'm placed my membership like, I got to do this every Sunday. <laughs> but the more and more you go, the more and more you try, it gets better and better. They put a jelly bean factory up over here. Then you start thinking, oh, man, I just sang four gospel songs on the way here. Oh, I just did a whole prayer to God on the way here. Let me call some people in Milwaukee and tell them lazy bus to get up here with me too. When you try and stop thinking about what's in it for me, but you start looking at it, what's in it for someone else? Watch how you move. Watch how you move. Watch how your chest will start to be out. you start to feel like you can make a difference. You'll start talking to yourself differently. I am important. I am God's child. You start remembering things like, I'm baptized. I got the blood. Like, off encouragement. Just encouragement. Not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. The glue breaks when we start thinking about ourselves. And when the glue breaks, the structure breaks. So I want to leave you all with practical tools. You may be sitting there like, I hear you, Brooks. I, I know I got an encouragement, but nobody ever encouraged me, so how do I encourage? There's many times that we struggle with loving because nobody really taught us how to love. And because we haven't dove into our words, we often are ignorant on God's love. So I, I pray I can give you some practical tools uh, that you can walk away with. Um, and, and I like to call this the encouragement muscle. If y'all know uh, uh, Adrian, she uh, uh, lives in the weight room, y'all. I'm talking about lifting big weights by herself. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And she taught me that when you work out, that first week is gonna be <laughs> it's gonna be tough. Machine guns, you're gonna need all that, right? But if you keep trying, if you stay disciplined, it gets easier. And then you start to see results. And then you go a little harder because you saw the results. I want to implore to you all today is try to encourage someone. I know it's hard because many times the barrier to encouragement, especially us, is what if I get rejected? What if the person that I'm trying to encourage don't understand that I'm encouraging and they take it as offense? I ask you to go look at Pericleo and ask you to adjust maybe the way that you're encouraging. Maybe they don't need to be taught right now. Maybe they just need to be comforted. Maybe they don't need to be comforted. Maybe they need to be begged. Maybe you need to get on your knees and beg them to come to church. On your knees. And while y'all there, y'all might as well pray together. How we encourage others is important, and we got to work this out together, right? I, I love in Proverbs verse 16 through 24, uh, when we're really looking at this encouragement muscle, uh, is, is the importance of using uplifting words. A wise person once told me, if you ain't got nothing good to say, don't say nothing. 
So I understand now why we ain't talking to each other. So we have to ask God to change our heart, to change our mind. Verse, uh, Proverbs verse 16 says, gracious words are a honeycomb. Y'all remember honeycomb cereal? <laughs> Sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. Just words of encouragement can do that. Look, everybody putting on the front. Everybody trying to show their best right now. Everybody. But just try to give encouragement to someone. They'll be like, man, you don't even know what I'm going through. You don't even know how much I need to hear this. But this is what we can do as a church. Right? Not only by uh, giving words of encouragement, uh, we also can do acts of service. Acts of service to find ways to uh, happily and encouragingly find ways that we can serve others. I think about in John 13, verses 14 through 17. When Jesus washed his disciples' feet. Let, let's, let's turn over there. Let's turn over there. I got five minutes. Five more minutes. All right. Cool, 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 cool. I don't know why preachers ask that. Because they still going to keep preaching anyway. We're trying to get the buy-in. It's the buy-in. You know, it's the buy-in. He's like, man, this is your fourth time saying it. <laughs> we can have fun, amen. John 13. Uh, yeah, let's go verse. Let's go verse fourteen. He said, "Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, just think about your feet. Right, I'm gonna keep moving on. I'm gonna keep moving on. You also should wash one another's feet. Mm, think about other somebody, somebody else's feet." Now, there's many ways that Jesus could have served his disciples. But he chose to wash his feet. Now, even in that back of the day, it meant so much. There was so much weight behind it. Uh, we probably don't respect it as much as today in 2023. It meant so much. Even Jesus even washed Judas' feet. The person that he knew was going to betray him. The person that knew was going to set him up. You're going to still wash somebody's feet that ain't, that's, that's your hater? The one that's been talking bad about you, you've been hearing everything about them do somebody else. Are you encouraged to wash their feet? Like, you know what? I'm going to wash their feet today. Come on. But their first 15 says, I have set you an example. <laughs> this is why Jesus did it. I've set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. A lot of reasons why we do what we do is because Jesus did it. And if you can't hold on to that, you're going to be confused for a long time in your life. The reason why you love it is not for you. It's because God loved you first. Love is a spiritual word. The reason why you have faith, the reason why you can trust your brother is not because of your flesh. It's only because of God. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control all comes from the spirit. It's not the flesh. So when we give credit to God for allowing us to be the good person that we are, the reason why you got hired for your job is because of God. Because you got the attributes of God in you that's going to make their company even better. But what are we doing in the church? Encouragement. It's needed. For Jesus has set this example in verse 16, very, very truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master. Nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. See, that get a lot of people mad sometimes. But I'm trying to be better. I, I'm trying to climb the ladder. I, I feel like I got so much more worth. But verse 17 says this. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. If you do them. He didn't say when you do them. Because Jesus knows that he can't force you to do it if you try it out. If you get the bucket of water ready. If you prepare and get the towel. If you get the soap. If you do everything that it takes so that when it's your opportunity to wash some feet, that you'll be ready. That you're not sitting there like, mm, I'm only doing this because God said it. 
but you're in there having a conversation. Well, how was your day? Understanding that that's the most intimate. That's why I love getting pedicures now. Even as a man, man's mom, get pedicures. Amen, amen. Try it out. Amen, amen. Because you get an opportunity to relax and to think and to be pampered. And you walk out of there skipping, feeling good. But the same way we can have others that don't know God to feel the same way. To feel the same way. Lastly, I want us to understand in order to encourage, we have to share our faith. No one's going to know you, <laughs> you're a Christian unless you tell them. <laughs> Especially if you ain't living like it. The way the world will know that we are followers of Christ is by the way we live and how we speak. By our example. And I know it's tough, but Brooks, I know, I, I know God gives us repentance. I know that God's able to wash our sins, and I did it last night, but that person in the family is still trying to bring up a year ago. It's trying to bring up my jail record. It's trying to bring up that mistake. It's trying to bring up that argument. It's trying to bring up the negativity. God can use that. God can use that. God can use you, and especially he actually wants you more than anything. So what do you mean? All right, let's look at Acts 9. Acts 9. Acts 9. Acts chapter 9. Uh, I want us to look at verse 26. Now we're looking at Saul, right? When Saul came to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples. But they were all afraid of him. Why were they afraid of Saul? He was killing Christians. You a Christian off with your head. I would have been afraid of Saul. But we don't live in a time right like that. Christians back then had an opportunity and, and a reason to be quiet. But even then, Christianity was the fastest growing religion, religion at that time. So how can you tell me that a church that was persecuted can grow so they were sharing their faith? He tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him, not believing that he was really a disciple. You, I just saw you killing people. I just seen you on the news. But watch this, verse 27. But Barnabas, the man of encouragement, his name literally means encouragement, took him and brought him to the apostles. He told them how Saul on his journey had seen the Lord and that the Lord had spoken to him and how in Damascus he had preached fearlessly in the name of Jesus. See, Barnabas stood on behalf of Saul. When Saul couldn't vouch for himself, he stepped in and said, oh, I know what y'all know about Saul, but God is really working on his life. God really transformed him. We talk about bringing young folks back to church. We're going to need you all to stand on behalf of them. Speak on behalf of them. Oh, we ain't seen brother, brother, such and all, but I know God is still with him because I remember him as a little boy. I know God is good with him. I've seen him on Facebook. He's alive. So that means, that I, let me make a call to him real quick and just check on him. It should spur you then to encourage one another. So Saul stayed with them and moved about freely in Jerusalem, speaking boldly in the name of the Lord. Saul couldn't do what he did and couldn't have his ministry unless it was for Barnabas. There's many young people that aren't in the churches because they're restricted by us. And we're not speaking on behalf of the young people that we're condemning. It's important to share our faith. It's important to share others' faith. Because if we're all in this together, we have one faith. No matter our journeys, no matter our experiences, no matter what we've been through, we have one faith. And since we have one faith, it gives me an opportunity to give you one encouragement. <laughs> And to know that if I'm able to encourage you, I'm only able to encourage you through the encouragement that God gives me. So if you're dealing with, struggling with encouragement, ask God to encourage you first. 
It's hard to pour from an empty cup. So stop walking around empty. Ask God to fill your cup because you won't be effective with an empty cup. Ask him to encourage you because, you know, we're talking about building the grid, the bridge and, and connecting the dots. You're going to be needed. You're going to be needed. What, just think about the world without glue. These pews wouldn't even be here. I don't see no nails or nothing. Somebody's probably their wig may be not be on. Nails. Pictures. We take for granted glue. And we take for granted encouragement. Of how easy encouragement will allow us to stay together. To take hold. To allow us to be beautiful on the outside so that we can attract folk back to Christ. If I know North Shore is an encouraging church, I'm going to invite somebody to come. I'm going to invite somebody to stay, and I'm going to invite somebody to grow. And this all can happen through encouragement. It's the solution, y'all. We ain't, we ain't got to do no more research. We ain't got to have no more means. We just need you to start encouraging folk. Take the challenge. Find one person a day to encourage. If you can't find somebody, encourage yourself. <laughs> but through all it all, we can and we will do this together, y'all. But we need to do it with God. So if this has blessed your life, look, God has a seat ready for you in his body, in his kingdom, in his family. But today is your day. Today is your day that he wants to adopt you into his family. Look, this family is fun. There's so many benefits from this family. You get treated good. You get loved. They listen to you. And I'm not talking about the people around you. I'm talking about God. That you can depend on him when you can't depend on no one else. And he will come through every single time. But it takes for us to do our part. God just wants you to take one step and he'll jump. And how can you do that when you're outside the body? We're asking you to jump into this water. And it's not a symbol. It's not a, a thing, an act that we just do on Sundays. It's a commitment to your life. Well, how can, how, that's scary. Well, look, hear the word of God. Even if the word doesn't make sense, even if you can't, we, we got leaders. We got brothers that's ready, that's encouraged to be an encourager to you. They can sit down with you. And we don't even have to go to the whole Bible. We want to give you the plan of salvation. To show you that God loves you. That he wants you. And the only thing you got to do is give him your hand. But you got to believe that. Believe that it's true and believe that it's for you. Once you believe that, then you're able to repent of your sins. To be able to be like, you know what? I guess I was living for my flesh. Thank you, brother, for showing me that. Thank you for letting me know that I was living a life headed towards death but I want so much more I want that abundant life I want that mansion I want that robe you believe it we'll take your hands you come up here you look at everybody when you try it's not even scary because everybody's looking at you big eyes just proud just thinking about ways that we can support you not just on Sundays but for your life you say the most beautiful confession that any man can ever say on this world. That I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. We take that, we get a round of applause, we get excited, we jump up. And we'll baptize you today for the remission of your sins. You go down with your sins, you come back up a new creature, a new name. You come up as a Christian. After that, the devil's going to be busy. <laughs> He's going to be mad. North Shore done got another one. So you tap into us so that we can help you to live faithfully on this world. But we're also going to need you too. 
We just don't want to add you to the body or God doesn't want to add you to the body just for you to sit there. He wants you to be part of the family so that we can grow together. If you are a part of the body of Christ and uh, you came in today and you needed some encouragement, go to God first. Ask him to fill you up. And once he does that, because if you ask God, <laughs> he will provide. Once he fills you up, you take that and you pour it into someone else. I'm going to push you. I, I encourage you to encourage that person that you may just be bumping heads with. Don't ask for their permission. Don't ask for the, Don't ask for it. Just do it. If you don't want to hear what they got to say, write them a note. You can't, you can't write back to a letter. But at least you did your part in encouraging. That's time for me. If if you are here today and you want to be baptized, please come as we stand. Just raise your hand. I'll come with you. I'll come with you because today is that important as we stand and sing the song of invitation. Why don't you come? All my trials sing all of my all my care. You give everything to God. Everything Lord, to God. I can. If you need prayer, you can come up and we'll pray for you. We'll hold hands and we'll pray together as a family. Prayer sometimes encourages. And through the pain, the, through the pain, sing and the strain. You may be seated. Only Jesus, singing on. Only Jesus said he builds me up through all, through, through all of my, all of my trials, all of my trials, when I'm on my knees.